Two more minutes. My name is Michael Bergio with co-host Mark Novak. And this morning we're going to be talking about getting rejected. Rejected. Uh, yeah. Rejected. You can make lemonade out of lemons. Yes. And so we're referring to you make an offer on a property, you get rejected. Yes. Mark, yes. talk us through what sort of what should be the buyer's mindset. What should they look to get out of when they make an offer? Um, obviously, you would love to get it accepted, but it's not always yeah. reality. Oh, look, I, th I think a counter, I think um, when when getting your offer rejected, it's really good to know why. I think that's probably the most important thing out of the rejection. I'd actually look forward to the rejection so you can do a little bit of a discovery process yes. and work out what is going to make that deal stick. So, you know, we call it a, sometimes a counter offer. Um, yes. So, you know, you'll make an offer of 380,000 $380, and then the vendor, the seller comes back at 420,000. That's great. That's a great rejection in terms of you now know where the, where goal the goalposts are. are. <laughs> well said. So, and especially in a market, good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Andrew, Todd. Always good to have you guys on. Hi, Lots everyone. of viewers on this morning straight off the bat. This is great because especially in a market at the moment where basically data or research you had done with yourself two, two months ago, three months ago, it's almost irrelevant. The market's grown. So we are, like we call it, in a trans transitional market. It is an upward market. So sometimes as a buyer, even as an agent, we've got no idea where these properties are going to go. So you see a guide price on it. And we've had a couple of examples, even though in our say agency, for example, it's been eight to 880 and you're guiding 800. We've had several examples where they're selling for 950 and that, and that's just with pure demand. So um, very important when you lay down the offer is to get that, um, to get that figure back. Cause then, you know, and you can assess, but also terms as well, Mark. Terms. And, and one other thing, when you make the offer, don't use the word or. <laughs> yeah. Talk so me through like, that. What do you mean? Well, people, when they get rejected, they set themselves up for rejection. And sure. that, to the other agent, then you know that there's more money on them, in them. So they'll say, oh, look, can you make that offer of 300000 or see how you go? Yeah. You know, or, you know, so you've got to be sort of finite. You've got to be like final. You've got to be like finished. You've got to be like, that's it. So when you make the offer, set yourself up that it's not easy for the agent to reject you. Do you know mm. what I mean? So yep. uh, look, that's my offer. It's the best offer I could do. Um, if you can submit that to the client, it'd be great if you can get that accepted. As opposed to there's my offer of 380 or uh, put that in or just see how you go. Yeah, because you're already, um, you're sort of already basically telling the agent, I've got another offer. So just as a formality, submit that and I'll give you the new offer. When it's like, uh, and from an agent, your ears uh, would prick up, ping up just like, Straight okay. Away. And you're almost like, yep, submitted it. No good. What's your next offer? <laughs> and, you know, and that's. And salespeople do it as well. It's not just, it's not just, um, it's people that are experienced. So they'll say, you know, um, would you like to look at the property tomorrow or, and it's yeah. like, why are you getting yes. that on? Like just are you asking the question or what, you know what I mean? Like the, or always, would you be happy to pay 500,000 or, you know, so it's just be finite as well. And I know that rejection, it's easy to take the rejection when you put in the or into your, mm. into your offer, but don't. Definitely. And it's just those little tweaks, isn't it? Just um, that can really have an impact on the negotiation as well, especially like the, just that simple trick in the book, when you're booking an appointment, you give two times and you make it, even if you've got the whole day free, you go, I have 10 AM or 11, um, 2 PM. What suits you sort of uh, concept. Yep. You yeah. can give, give people that, that sort of, uh, and that, and like you're saying with the terms, Michael, um, so if anyone has tuned in, we're talking about getting rejected when making an offer for, for sale. It all can, also can be for rentals as well. Uh, we're talking about that aspect and then how, how to set yourself up. So, you know, um, 
people to have a good rejection in a way to get the most out information out of that. So you mentioned terms, Michael. Yes, and another another thing. Good morning, Amal. Good to have you on. Um, what do you do, Mark, when they don't give you a figure, a counter back? They just say thank you, but no thank you. Look, I think it's. I think that's pretty. It's that happens a lot in auction properties, mm. um, and I think a lot of it because they don't want to. They don't want to give away the reserve price, or they don't want to limit your your offer. Um, straight away, if they give you a counter offer, then you're not going to go over that in an auction environment. So I, I think, I think when making an offer, you've got to talk strong, and you got. And as I mentioned before, you've got to be definitive with your offer, mm. not just like open ended. So that's it. That's my offer. But if they're not giving you a counter offer, like with an auction property, you won't get a figure normally out of the client. But what the agent will do is say, put it on a contract. Yeah. Um, so they'll just go snap if it's a good offer. So I think, but again, it just illustrates exactly what we said before about being definite. That is a definite move. When you put on yes. a sign contract and check, again, that's like saying this is the deal. And I, I think people get, they get scared or they, um, with offers, for example, that auction campaign, like if you understand that you're not going to get a counter, but keep offering. Like, let's say it's an auction property with a guide of 800. You offer 810, they say, thank you, but no thank you. Go again, 820, thank you, but no thank you. Go again, go again. Like, you can make as many offers as you like. And free. It, it's free. It, it sort of fills it out as well. And basically, as you know, they can't give you the counter, but if you keep offering and you with what you're prepared, they may end up just going, that's accepted as well. Yep. Especially yep. if you're sort of, G'day Ray, good to have you on. Um, if you, you you want to make sure you're in the ballpark as well. Um, and in writing or verbal mark, much of a difference or just when you Look, start I, feeding it out? I think in writing is nice because it doesn't, um, uh, it, it, it's not open to any other interpretation once it's in writing. So mm. I think verbally is nice to have the warm conversation, back it up in writing. Um, sometimes there's silly business with agents where it can sell to somebody else without your yes. knowledge. Um, and if you've recorded that you've actually physically made that offer, um, it really just cements your position. Um, so in the event of an investigation, yes. stuff, stuff in writing is there. Uh, Ray says no audio. Can you hear us on Insta, Ray? Mm, not sure. But I think we're good. I can hear you clearly. Um, so what else, Mark, with, okay. So being rejected, key point is getting that counter offer in terms and where the goal per post is, uh, making multiple offers, they're free. In writing is great, on a contract is great. Yes. Um, also, I think a big one is as well, finding out when the owner can do a deal. So let's say if one of the owners is away or there's multiple owners, I think to work out the logistics, if your offer is accepted as well, to see how that can go. Because I know from a buyer's point of view, the worst thing is when you have an offer accepted and it can't get exchanged for 12 hours, one day or two days. And more often than not, the agent is informing every other buyer that an offer has been accepted. So here's your last chance. So a big tip would be to really, really minimize that period from when you get an offer accepted to exchanging and securing that property because I find a lot of hearts are broken Mark, during that offer accepted to exchange. Um, either they're missing it out or the price even goes higher because another party um, has got, the, got wind of there's a deal going to be done and they were sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, like rejected doesn't necessarily mean you, the dollars you've, you've, you've put forward have been rejected. It can mean that you actually got accepted with your figures, but you still didn't get the property. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that rejected can mean that, you know, you got offer accepted or two people got offers accepted. There was a race and one, and one person lost it, rejected. And I think, guys, if you're buying, if you've got the ability to buy on a cooling off period, and we're going to be coming into a market now where, that's probably going to be offered less and less because there are yeah, such, there's such high competition at the moment where yeah. compared to 
three, six, nine, 12 months ago, where you had the ability to put things on a five day cooling off, 10 day cooling off, you had the luxury of time because there weren't buyers out there. You got to be ready for it. There is that shift. It's happening where yep. you're not going to have that time. So really, and if you do have, if you do get the offer accepted on a calling off, just sign the contract straight away. You've got a calling off period to do that. I find Mark, some buyers really shoot themselves in the foot where they get offer accepted on a calling off and then they try and do all this due diligence prior to even exchanging. I think that's just deadly. You know what? In an auction, in a negotiation, um, there's one thing that's consistent in all that. Any people that move solidly, swiftly, always end up doing a better deal. So if you're wishy-washy, if you're slow, if you're arduous, if you're, you know, I just find that, you know, in an auction, you know, environment, people can see you straining and yes. they got you. But when you're just but, 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 but with, you, with your offers in an auction, um, you can get rejected. That's what today's about. Spot on. Rejected. But, you know, keep, I always like if I'm ever um, bidding on someone else's behalf, I always keep the gaps consistent. I don't change the gaps of the dollars. <laughs> you just so. took exactly what I was going to say. With my um, When I did that manly auction mark for a client, I spoke to Alex Haddad, great auctioneer. Um, I called him up, a good buddy of mine, just said, what's, <coughs> what's, <coughs> what's the tips <coughs> of, what tips do you have for me bidding at an auction? What, <coughs> what do you see? <coughs> Is that because you're vaping or you <laughs> vaping he, i said what's the best tip you see people buy and he go and i sort of was like do i bid first i like whatever and he goes don't whenever you bid once you've done your first bid your second third bid are instant you don't even think for a second so you bid 800 the next guy goes 820 you're 830 instantly and um I found that when I was doing it at the auction, it just gives that perception that you're not missing out on this property. You have no limit. Go away. This is my property. And I was watching one of Tom Panos's auctions on, um, what was it, on, on Saturday. And there was this bidder, the exact same thing started, but he was just instantly. Before basically the other guy had his hand up, he had already bid, outbid him. And you could just see that effect it had on the other bidder, he was like, I'm giving up because why bid like, again? He's like just going to outbid me straight away. Just five grand, 15 grand. Yes. Yeah. Use odd figures instead of round figures. I often like to use odd figures instead of round figures. So instead of instead of saying seven hundred, I'd be I would more I'd be more inclined to saying seven oh three. It shows mm. that as, a, as an offer maker, you've thought about it a lot, you've structured yeah. it, and that's it. And then people are more inclined to think that's your last offer because yeah. when I hear seven seven oh three, I think okay, they've thought about it. When I hear seven hundred, I think I might be able to get them up seven twenty, yeah. seven oh five, seven ten, seven fifty. Whatever that may be, I just think straight up won't get them up. But when it's an odd figure, great thing to do in a negotiation when you're making offers if you don't want to get rejected. Good point, because when I say that sort of 703, you're thinking, shit, they, they, their max was 700 and they're just squeezed out like an extra three grand sort of thing. G'day, Absolutely. Billy. Hope you're well, bud. Billy, definitely. Um, number. Yeah. Uh, Mark, what have we got on Thursday? Where are we going? Why are we going? Oh, my God. Um, we're going to Thailand. Wow. Yeah. Are we going to be live streaming from Thailand? I think we'll give it a crack. We can't let our um, thousands of viewers down. Millions. 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 Sorry, um, millions. We're, yeah, so we're doing a bicycle ride 500 kilometres on a bike over five In days. Five days. Um, over... It's going to be fun. So over land, a um, bit over 100, 120 kilometres a day we're doing. And um, we're doing it for a charity. We're doing it for um, Kids Home and Orphanage in Thailand. Yeah. Great cause. Um, Love you did it last everyone. year. 
did it last year. It was very moving. It was very touching. Um, meeting the kids, going to going to the home. Uh, we had a meal there. Um, got to know the kids, and that's what we rode for. So we rode. Uh, the, we finished the ride at the home, um, mm. and any money. So we've uh, Michael, Sir Michael Berger, Mark Novak, Prav and Vala. If you can sponsor any of us, um, if the hundreds we've paid for our rides, our foods, yep. our accommodation, or one hundred percent of the funding. It's not a non for profit. It's an all. Um, yeah. Uh, all funds go to the charity. So it's not not like 95% of the funds are anything. Yep. All funds will go towards the charity. So if anyone's got 20 bucks spare and wants to support us, can support us. Yes. 100 bucks, 5 bucks, whatever it is. We'll greatly appreciate it. Oh, Please. Lisa Novak just joined us. Unfortunately, she will not be joining oh, us on the ride. Real it's estate royalty. Real estate royalty. Yeah. Uh, Lisa's um, here in spirit. Yeah, Lisa went soft. Lisa was yeah. meant to go on the ride as well. Very First, she was meant to do the ride. Then she was yeah. meant to do support. But unfortunately, she's fallen ill. Mm. Yeah, she's yeah. Oh, we'll have to yeah. maybe next time. Maybe, maybe next, next time. time. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add there, Mark? Have a great day. It's Monday. It's a cracker of a day, and uh, real estate is hot. Yes. Options are good. We had the dual key. Um, had yeah, tell us about that one. That, okay, so that was a new property bought two years ago. Tell us through that. That's a great example of growth. I was trying to sell these puppies for $7.99 18 months ago, having mm -hmm. a hard time. And um, we, I, so we sold them and there was five of, of them. Of course. Of course. <laughs> there was five of them. And now I've just resold one of them. Uh, auction was tonight at 630 that's been um, cancelled because we sold it and it sold for nine hundred and forty thousand dollars. Wow! And that had good income, didn't it? The jewel key. Eleven hundred a week. Wow, that's massive. Uh, you so know, repayments to like three percent. I think you worked out the other day. What, what were those? What's what were those figures? Uh, look, if you're borrowing all the money, uh, it works out to about thirty-five grand. Oh, son. <laughs> Uh, works out to about thirty-five grand of repayments. You buy three and a half, thirty, 30 yep. say forty, um, and your repayments of your money coming in is fifty-five grand. But you also had thirty-five grand of depreciation, so that That's almost, big. yeah, that almost added an extra two hundred and fifty dollars a week to your rent, um, just because of the depreciation. I think depreciation is a bit of a is something a lot of people miss. I don't think a lot of people know what it is. Um, it's I don't think huge. people. I think we should do a talk on it actually, probably tomorrow, Mark, because Done. it's it's a big topic. It can be a game changer, and you can get it for I think up to forty years. Your yep. property is out there, so let's let's talk about depreciation tomorrow. Because let's do that. Let's do that. Hey, um, and the takeouts about today. Let's do those. Yes. Go for it, Mark. So You've been take rejected. Out, so takeouts today, uh, you've been rejected. What, uh, let's, that, that's good news. And making turning lemonade um, out of lemons. So what we spoke about is when you make an offer on a property for rent or for sale, um, the best scenario out of a rejection is you get a counter offer. You get an offer, uh, a response from an owner of what they will actually take. You will only do that by putting an offer in and getting an offer rejected. It's the only way you'll get a counter offer. The best case scenario is they accept your offer, but it's still a really good thing if they reject your offer and tell you what they're happy with. And because happy information with is key. Information key. is key. Not only dollars, it's terms. They may come back and mm -hmm. say, look, we'll do, we'll do those. We'll do five grand more, but we need a 12 week settlement. So, yes. you know, it's, it's, it, that, that, that whole offer. And also guys, when you're making an offer, don't set yourself up for rejection because the agent will sniff it out. Yes. And to say that again, basically you don't have or like make this offer or try this after. Just keep it simple and concise. Yeah, so, Less so is more. As an example, one person says, that's my final, I know it's my first offer. That's my final offer. I can move quickly. My offer is 705. If you could submit that, and I'd love to get that accepted. Thank you very much. Mm. Very, very finished, very finite. 
the worst one is that's my offer of 705. Um, what do you think? See how you go. Um, what do you think? Try that. Can, can, or uh, can you can you just put it in any way and just see how you go? Like as soon as you hear that as an agent, if you get there's an or or a see how you go behind it, it's not definitive. Then you know there's an opportunity for more money. Don't say that when you're making an offer. Yes. Um, make multiple offers in a in an auction campaign. Do not be disheartened if they do not give you a figure or a counter. Very different to private treaty. They're more inclined to give you a figure that would buy it. Uh, auction yeah. campaign, if it's a good agent, they will not. Um, no. So make multiple offers, put it on a contract. Also, big key thing is minimize the time difference from when you make the offer and get it accepted to when you exchange. Don't be fluffing around for two days, three days. So Snap. Snap it. Snappy, snappy. Also, get ready for less cooling off periods. Now the market is definitely heating up. You're not going to have time. So more options. Do get there'll it, be more yeah. options. There'll be less cooling off periods. Um, uh, the negotiations will be a, bit, a much more snap, snappier um, and not as, accommodate, uh, as accommodating as a downwards market. So yeah. the last, what we've done in 2017 and 18. Uh, or 16, end of 16, 17, 18, I think you're not going to see that style of market any longer. It's now switched from a, a buyer's market to a seller's the market. Sellers. And that is very sure. quickly. Very, that is very sure. quickly. Yeah. yeah. All righty. And we've got the Thailand right. I'll put the link, guys, in the comments. $5, $50, $5,000, whatever oh, you guys can do. If help. you could sponsor us, it'd be really appreciated, guys. Very much appreciate it. All righty, guys. Thank you very much. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be doing depreciation. Hey, take care. Hey, thank you, everyone. See you, guys. See you, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. bye.